Hi, I'm Three Gnomes. I'm a solo indie game developer, and I'm currently working on a game called Toby's Topsy Tale, which is a psychological horror 3D platformer. In the past month, I've taken this game from just being levels that I'd created to having a fully functional character that is now animated, as well as having collectibles and even a health system that functions. The first thing I wanted to do this week was go through and make it so that your character could deal damage to enemies. After all, what's the point of having enemies if you can't murder them violently? I set up just a really basic system that used a variable for how much damage you're dealing to enemies, so that later, I could make it possible for you to deal more damage if you get upgrades or things like that, possibly even new weapons. Basically, this entire system works by making it's so that when you attack, a trigger will spawn around your character, and if an enemy goes into that trigger, they will take the damage from your damage value, reducing their health. And at its most basic level, that's how it works. I already had it set up so that when Tilly takes damage, she plays the hit animation. Now I had to make it so that she would go to the dead state when her health hits zero or goes under zero, and then of course play her death animation so that she can die. To make it feel more like you've actually killed something, I made it so that her capsule collider disappears, but after she plays her death animation, she kind of just lays there for a few seconds before finally actually disappearing. I wouldn't want you to forget that you just murdered a cute innocent little creature, now would I? To give you even further incentive to commit homicide in my game, I also made it so that when you do kill Tilly, you're rewarded with three gold coins. After all, you're supposed to kill everything if it gives you coins, right? Obviously, you were supposed to do that, weren't you? I mean, the game rewarded you for it. So then why do you feel bad? Or maybe you don't. I guess that's up to you. Anyways, the next thing I wanted to do was make the world look a little bit better in general. I wanted the colors to pop, I wanted things to just look better. So I decided to add some post-processing to the level. The first step was adding atmospheric fog, which is kind of how things look in real life. After that, I set up ambient occlusion, depth of field, and color grading to make the entire level pop better. The results were pretty subtle, but ultimately that's what I was going for. But when you look at them side by side, you can definitely tell that the post-processing really adds a lot to the scene. One of the very smart people that view my videos, called Dare Babonnet, mentioned that the movement of my character seemed kind of jittery, and helped me fix it by recommending that I change the update method in my game to a fixed update. And sure enough, it actually started working instantly better. So thank you, Dare Babonnet. And I'm sure I said that wrong. Next, I wanted to add some logic to something in the game world. I decided that the first thing I was going to mess with was the bridge that goes between the Healthy Kingdom and the Snack Kingdom. Ideally, when you start this level, it should be down, and you have to flip a switch in the castle to make it come up so that you can access the Snack level. So I just set a global variable attached to it that would make it so that when that's triggered, it would come up. Now I had a bridge that actually went up and down based on what you, the character, did. And thus, something in my game had logic. After that, I made a second camera that would zoom in based on what your character did. So that if you opened a dialogue box, for instance, it would zoom in on what the character's looking at. It was pretty easy to set up, but it did make the game feel so much more polished. And considering I've only been programming this game for a little over a month, polish wasn't really something I was expecting to get. Or even get close to, for that matter. Next up was making it feel like you actually took damage when you get hit. To accomplish this, I made it so that when you collided with an enemy and took damage, the edges of the screen would flash red and cracked and bloody. I tried this out and it looked pretty good, but I think it lasted too long, so I made it just a quick effect that pops up. And now it actually felt like you were being hurt when you took damage. Now that it felt good to look at stuff, kill stuff, and die, I decided to add in some more fun effects to the game. Specifically, I'd been wanting to add in specialized unlockable skins. Otherwise, what's the point of collecting things? If they don't unlock something in the game, that's fun to have. So I made the skins and made them attached to variables that you could change them at will throughout the game based on what you'd unlocked. And it was honestly a lot of fun setting all of this up. I played around with some particle effects like kicking up dust when Toby runs, but ultimately decided I didn't like how that feels. But since I was already in the particle systems, I decided to add smoke to the chimneys in this little village that's in the healthy kingdom. Suddenly the village felt alive and it was super cute. Doesn't it feel like there's some cute little strawberry or something just making cakes in that house? To make you feel even worse about brutally assaulting cute little Tilly with your candy cane, I added a sound effect that now she squeals when you smack her. I know you're still gonna hit her, but now, hopefully, you feel a little worse about doing it. But why should she be the only one that squeals in pain when she takes damage? Now there were clear audio cues for when both of you took damage, and if you think that's fun, just wait till you hear what it sounds like when you die. What a fun, cute little game we're playing, right? And I hear what you're saying. Three gnomes, you can't make us feel bad about killing an enemy in a 3D platformer. That's what you're supposed to do. It's not like we know anything about Tilly. She's just an enemy there to hit. So next I decided to add a dialogue box so that she could greet you directly, introduce herself, be real friendly, and then you can decide whether or not you kill her. 
So the dialog box was set up, but next I had to make it so that the camera would actually zoom in on it. Otherwise, what's the point of making that special camera for this specific purpose? With that in place, now you could greet this friendly little creature that you could also murder. The system I used to make the dialog box was set up so that when you collide with an object that triggers the dialog box, that object tells the dialog box what to say and shows the custom image that I drew and attached to that object. So therefore, everything could be unique while using the same setup. To make sure it worked with other things, I also made the sign that's at the beginning of the fridge world, directing you to the snack level, also have a pop-up dialogue. And of course, its own unique image I drew. Now in terms of gameplay, it makes sense that when you walk up to a creature and they start talking to you, a dialogue box should pop up. However, for things like signs and other things that you choose to interact with, I needed to make sure that you had the ability to do that and that every time you walked up to something, it didn't just pop up in your way. So I made a separate option for signs and similar things so that when you walk up to them, an interact prompt pops up on the bottom of the screen. And when you hit that button, then the dialogue option pops up. However, you could just walk away. That felt a lot more natural and it made it feel like you could interact with the world a lot more. And so I made a lot more things in the world interactable. The next step was making things even more complicated by making the dialogue options that pop up dependent on things you have done in the world. For instance, when you first interact with this door in the village, this dialogue option pops up. However, if you've killed the king of this level, a different dialogue option will pop up when you approach the door. Now your actions directly affect what people say to you and the way they interact with you. But killing the king, that's such a big idea. What if I brought it closer to home and made something you do right now in the game directly affect what happens? So now, when you first walk up to this other door in the healthy village, this dialogue pops up. And then let's say you go and beat Tilly violently to death, then you go back to the door, and this dialogue option will pop up. Isn't it just so much fun the impact you can have on the world through your actions? And that was a good start, but for my severed head snowman friend here, I needed to give him a lot more options so that it would really feel like he was alive and talking to you based on the things that you had done. So when you first walk up to him, he'll say this. And then if you've killed Tilly and you go back, he'll say this. And then if you've killed the king and you go back to him, he'll say this. And now the severed ice cream snowman head was truly alive and talking to you about the things that you had done. And I was almost done, but believe it or not, it was going to get more complicated because now I had to give you the option to make a choice when interacting with something. So let's go through it. So you see this podium and you walk up to it and when you interact with it, it gives you a question and two options, donate or don't donate. So let's say that you decide not to donate. So you leave and make your way up to the big imposing castle and walk up to the doors. But it says this. So you go back down to the podium and try to donate, but you don't realize that you don't have enough coins. So when you hit the donate button, it tells you this. So you go and collect the coins that you need, come back, and now you can donate. And now that you've donated, you go back up to the castle and they let you in. And now you have access to the new level, the interior of the avocado castle. And now beyond just dialogue, you could directly interact with the world by making choices. And that's important for this game. And that's pretty much it for this week's devlog. Make sure you let me know in the comments what you think. And make sure you like and subscribe so that you follow the project. And so that I know you're liking what you're seeing. This is also the second video in a row where I've had to thank a commenter for fixing a problem I've had in the game. I promise you, I really value your input. So please comment. And if you're not subscribed and it says that most of you aren't, make sure you subscribe. Anyways, I'll stop going with all this. Thank you for watching. Seriously, thank you so much. I'm Three Gnomes and... Eventually, I'm going to come up with a cool sign-off. But for now, uh, peace out, y'all. <laughs> I'm from Tennessee, so y'all isn't as weird for me. Um, okay. Bye.